Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's towards the end of October now, and with October coming, that also means the cooler weather's coming. And when it's time for cooler weather, that means camping's over for most of us. Most of us are weekend warriors when it comes to camping. Some of you are much more devoted and living in your RVs and touring the country, and I'm hoping someday maybe I'll be right there with you, but for now, Jill and I and Hank and Bo are weekend warriors and with it being the end of October it's time to get this trailer winterized. My trailer is the bullet. It's a 26 footer and the particular model as you can see it's a 261 RBS. You may have the same one you may not. It's made by Keystone but whether you have a bullet Keystone manufactured trailer like I do or one similar, they all pretty much run the same. So let me show you how to get this thing winterized. Now as you can see here, we have our water system for our trailer. Right up here, this is where you flush out the black system when you're emptying your sewage the end of your camping trip this is where you fill up your water tanks and this is where you connect to the city if you're at a campground that provides water this is where we're going to winterize we'll get to that in a minute but you can see that they've got it all set up labeled and ready one thing i want to mention before we go any further you see right here this is the water heater bypass this is when I flip this, it'll actually bypass the water heater. Still have a connection which will help me flush it. We don't want to put antifreeze in the water heater. So we're going to flip that up. That way it'll bypass it now. And it will flush the system instead of filling our water heater with antifreeze. So the first thing we're going to want to do is drain the main tank. Which is underneath. And you can see mine right here. I've already drained it because when I came home from camping I wanted to drain it not have anything sitting in it knowing that we weren't going out anymore this year. So it should already be dry. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is the black tank flush. Now because we're going to be pushing air through our uh, system to flush out that black tank we want to make sure that our black tank is open. So, I'm going to open this up. This should already be flushed because when I went camping, I ran a bunch of um, water through it. So, it should all be clean and everything. But you can see that there is water in there. So, we're going to push as much of that out as we can just to keep that from freezing. Now, you're going to look for something like this. They sell them at Walmart pretty cheap. But this just threads on right up here to our black tank and then we hook up our air compressor probably about 30 psi and we'll just push that through don't want to turn up too high and have a problem where you're blowing your system out but we got our compressor sitting here um i am turned up a little bit high so i'm gonna kick that down to We'll go 35 right there and this could get noisy but we're gonna hook up and blow and see if this blows any any moisture out of our system As you can see, that did get some push that's now draining. Wasn't a whole lot in there, which is good. But again, that little bit will freeze. And to help make up for anything that we don't get, I always pour a little bit of antifreeze down the toilet, which will sit in that black tank all winter long as well. Okay, so now that we've got the bypass turned on and everything, we want to take pressure out of our system. 
So we're going to come to our sinks and we're just going to make sure both hot and cold that there's no pressure in them. So there's no pressure in our lines, which is good. Okay, now once you got the pressure out of the system, you want to go to your hot water heater. Should look something like this on the outside of your trailer. And right here, some of you may have an anal rod and some of you might not. You're going to want to take that out if you do. But before we remove this, if you just got back from camping, this could still have a lot of hot water in it. But you're just going to come right up here and relieve any pressure. That'll drain or take the pressure off your water tank. You can see there's a little bit of water still in there. And then you're going to undo this. And this will drain your tank. And broke it loose. So, mine does not have an anal rod. So you will not have to remove that. And those anal rods are good usually for about two years. You're going to want to replace that every chance that possible because that will keep your water heater from getting ruined and needing replaced. Now once this is done draining, you can see it's still coming out. You're just going to want to leave this open all winter. It'll keep any fluid that's slow to drain. It'll allow it to still come out and drain. Just take your anode rod and stick it right here to hold it if you have one or in my case a plug just sit it right here so that way you know where it is and you remember to put it back on next season when you're getting ready to go okay so now that our hot water tank is drained we're going to start putting antifreeze into the system now with where i've got my hot water bypass here yours might be different in my last trailer i had to lift the mattress under the a master bedroom and turn it manually you could look in there and see the hose system running and I could see where I needed to block the water from going into the water heater and also flip a switch so it would bypass it this one's a little bit nicer than my last trailer and it has it just by the flip of this switch here um, not all the trailers are set up that way so know what you need to do on your specific trailer Okay, so now we're ready to put the antifreeze into our system. If you have an old garden hose laying around, you can use that for this. I did not. We'd actually got rid of it, so I just bought a little six, seven foot piece of white hose. You're going to want this adapter here. You're going to screw it right on here. And then you'll have your hose. You're going to want to make sure you got RV grade antifreeze. Okay, a little bit different than what goes in your car. This is an RV grade. And all you're going to do is simply put this down into your jug. Just set it right here. And when you turn on the water pump, it's going to start sucking that antifreeze through here and into the system. So let's go turn on the pump. Okay, so you're going to need to find your control system. And you're going to go to your water pump. Okay, you're going to turn that on. I don't know if you could hear or not, but you could hear the pump kick on. So we're going to go to... Our faucet here we're going to turn on our there's some water that was still in the line and we're going to push that on probably listen for some choking we'll watch this water eventually go from clear to pink Okay, so there's 
token we were looking for. I was pushing all that water out of the line. Pushing the air out of the line as well. Just wait for it to suck up that antifreeze. Okay, so I got that flip down to in use. Now you can see it's starting to drain. Okay. So that water pump's filling up. And there's the pink. All right, pink on that one as well. Clear out the bubbles, clear out this extra water. Make sure our drain is pulled so that way the water goes down. There's our pink. Okay, now we want to do our kitchen it as well. Here comes the clear. There goes the choking. And there comes the pink. Okay, as we can see, it's coming out nice and pink. I'm just gonna let it run for a second because this will put pink in my drain system or antifreeze, I guess, which will help there to be antifreeze in my lines to my gray tank to keep that from it will help any water that's in my lines to either mix with the antifreeze or it will help flush it out once you have the kitchen and the bathroom sink done don't forget your shower okay that's important to remember this one as well There's the choking, and there's the pink. Now do the cold. There's the pink coming out. Okay. Oh, we're also going to want to do our shower head. We do have water in there, huh? So let's not forget that. Okay, so now we got pink coming out of the shower. Okay. Yes, this does leave a pink mess on your floor. But I'll go get some towels and wipe it up. I don't want to run water down it, obviously, because if I run water down it, I'm putting water back in my system. And last but not least, we got to do our toilet. There goes the pink swirl on that. So one thing people don't think or associate with winterizing their trailer is their fridge and their free the freezer. Now we have these little clips. Came with our trailer, but you can probably order them on Amazon. They just go and hook right here on your trailer. You want to make sure it's off okay so here we are we're off okay but you're gonna close it just to where that that's gonna prevent it from closing all the way it does keep a little bit of an opening there so that way it doesn't get moldy and stale in there okay you just clip right on there you gotta hold them until it closes now the last thing we're going to want to do is our low point drains. Now I believe mine, yep, they're just right here. So these are the lowest point which we we'll want to drain them. You may have a plug that you have to unscrew or you may have a valve like this. But when we turn these off or open them. All right, there's some pink, which is what we wanted to see. And more pink there. So we're just gonna let those stay open, just so they can drip dry. 
and that's really about it okay so now that our trailer is all done we just got to clean up so you can see I used two gallons to get this winterized and I don't think that's bad at all for how much money we spend on these things definitely worth two gallons which come to about eight bucks now you'll notice I got a couple little pink spots you're gonna want to wipe that up and otherwise it'll discolor I'm gonna go and get a cloth and wipe this down now here's one more trick that Jill and I learned we've always done it and we've never had a problem we hate mice and during the winter mice are going to want to find a place that they can get away from snow and what better place than right here in your trailer it's dry it'll be warmer than the snow so we buy an eight bar pack of irish spring every every time we winterize our trailer and what we do is we just simply open these up we leave the bar inside the box but we scatter them throughout the trailer and just put them down on the floor under the sink uh, by the front door by our bed it does two things the mice hate the smell of this it will drive them out and push them out throw a couple in your storage units underneath your trailer as well because you don't want them in there either so it'll also keep your trailer smell nice as well so at the end you can use them if you want great for bathing your dogs um, but you know five dollars to keep the mice out worth it all day every day so I'm gonna go ahead and get these scattered around and get the trailer locked up so thank you guys for joining me on this episode of DIY Love Life. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the like and subscribe button. And sadly, winter's coming, which is good because it brings its own blessings. But camping's over. So until next year, right? Thanks, you guys. Love you. Remember, don't just live life, but love life.